We continue the discussion uh, on concepts of linear algebra and we are into the last two important aspects of uh, uh, the concepts with respect to matrices. Uh, one is the rank uh, and uh, the other is decomposition and specifically we will talk of singular value decomposition SVD which is uh, commonly used in many pattern recognition concepts. We will define what is a rank and also see how the rank is very closely associated with uh, the SVD. I will give you uh, two definitions of the rank and we will just discuss two short examples uh, uh, of uh, uh, the method of how to calculate the rank of a matrix. So, one definition says that it is the rank of a matrix is the dimension of the column or row space of a matrix. I will give you the other definition and then discuss what is uh, this column space. The rank of a matrix can also be defined as the largest order of any non-singular minor of a matrix. Rank of a matrix we will say A So, as you can see that the word non singularity is coming. So, the rank is very closely associated with uh, singularity of a matrix. We will look at this definition first which is talking about the column or row space of a matrix A. So, we are talking about an arbitrary matrix A of size m cross n and uh, the column space or row space is defined by uh, the number of uh, linearly independent column vectors which uh, uh, now from the matrix A and it is also called the span of A. Okay? The, so, it, it forms a span uh, or, uh, or the, the, the ve column vectors if they span a particular space which you talked about uh, uh, space uh, some time back uh, and that uh, is uh, the, uh, the dimension of that corresponding space uh, is actually the rank and we will actually look uh, um, at this definition take an example of how to compute a rank in very brief and then look at the alternative definition of what is the uh, non singularity uh, non the largest non singular minor of a okay now <coughs> there are several methods to compute the rank we will briefly discuss one such method to compute the rank of a and uh, the there are four steps i am writing in brief <coughs> reduce to row echelon form that means, this is the processing done to A to compute its rank. Okay. So, take A and reduce to or uh, uh, to reduce is not the correct word convert I will probably say or put to rho echelon form. identify the pivot column and number 3 <coughs> and number 4 number of pivot columns is the rank.
or you can say rank is equal to the number of pivot columns. So, we will take a small example to illustrate this. Let us take, uh, I will not work out fully, I will just uh, leave uh, part of this as an exercise for you. Uh, if you take an example, let us say as given here, I am taking an example from a book, we will give the references for these at the end of the uh, talk. Okay, so, this is a simple uh, 5 cross 4 matrix okay, with 5 columns and 4 rows and first we actually st start with the first column and uh, try to reduce the leading diagonal to 1 if it is not so by suitable low column manipulation interchange and then the uh, task will be to minimize these uh, values uh, of the leading uh, elements in the corresponding rows to zeros. So, uh, just to give an example that uh, what you can do is uh, multiply this by 2 and subtract from this. Uh, you can directly subtract this from this row and uh, sorry add these two rows basically and the fourth row is to be subtracted from the first and that is uh, what will give you the leading diagonal. So, if you do that what we are saying is that these are the operations let me write them. For the row R 2 it is basically R 2 minus twice R 1, okay, I will write it in short. R 3 is to be assigned by just adding R 2 and R 3, uh, sorry R 3 and R 1 and R 4 you need to assign by subtracting R 1 from R 4. So, if you do this, I leave it as an exercise for you that you will get this matrix. The first row remains the same, then you will have a 0 here because you have multiplied this by 2 and subtracted from here and the rest will be okay, 0 to 4, 1 minus 1. You just work it out. This example as I said before is given in a book. So, you can actually uh, look at that. Okay. So, this is uh, what has been done with the first column. <coughs> you keep doing uh, the same thing with the you know remaining columns. So, you can see that you already have a 0 and 1 leading diagonal 1 here. So, you have to put the corresponding uh, values 0 at this point here and this will involve operations such as R 3. So, what has to be done with R 3? You multiply this by 2 and subtract from here. So, R 3 will be taken as R 3 minus twice R 2 and then R 4 you just add these two. So, R 4 will be <coughs> okay. and if you do this the first row remains the same 1 0 minus 1 0 4, second row remains same 0 1 2 0 1, this one this will become 0. this will also become 0, it is 3 and then finally, you have 0 0 and check it out yourself the, the, these terms almost cancel out till this point minus 2 and 6 because that is what you are adding. So, you continue in this form the final thing is what you need to do now is you have already a 0 here. So, you have to make this uh, uh, <coughs> a 0 okay? and, and then convert that is what you need to do. So, what you do is basically uh, multiply this by minus 2 and add it to this. So, R 4, so the next operation or the last in fact operation will be R 4 is R 4 minus twice R 3 okay? and that will give you I am not reproducing the first four rows because they will remain the same and what you will get is what are these four rows they are actually these sorry three rows yeah. 
are from here. This upper sub matrix is going to sit here. Okay. These three rows again I repeat will be the same, the last row will come as this. Okay. So, once you have done this that means what you have got is these three rows at this point and the last row 0, you need to find out how many uh, columns you have uh, which uh, actually. Uh, so, if you find it here that there is a 1 here, you need to find out the basis. So, you need to find out how many columns have only 1 at, uh, uh, at the corresponding uh, leading position. So, you will have 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So, in fact, it will be this column here, another column here and this column at this position okay. because this row will be triple 0, 1, minus 3. So, you will have 1, 2 and 3 the rank of well it is not written with a capital R the rank of this matrix A is 3. This is one trivial way by which you can compute the rank of a matrix. Of course, there are many other better methods uh, to compute a rank and we will talk about that uh, soon. Let us go to the other definition of uh, the largest non singular minor. Okay. Now, the rank of a matrix R <coughs> can be talked about you know, in, in different ways with respect to a non singular minor. I mean uh, uh, the corresponding rank of a matrix A is considered to be uh, that you find out if there is one non zero minor in, uh, uh, in, in a matrix A and that becomes the rank that is one way we can have that. And if you take any other minor which is uh, larger than that particular non zero minor that minor uh, vanishes or it becomes singular. Okay. So, the rank of a matrix is the largest non singular minor. How do you uh, uh, obtain a minor from a rank A? Basically, uh, uh, if, if, if a, per a matrix A is of size say n cross n uh, or m cross n, you suppress one row and one column and get uh, one minor which is uh, one or less. You can suppress two columns and two rows and so on and so forth. So, you can suppress k columns and k rows. Uh, for a matrix A and create the corresponding minor. Okay. Uh, so, if you take this definition now the second one uh, with respect to a non singular minor. So, that means, if a matrix is singular, okay, if a matrix is singular that means, a determinant vanishes uh, and it is uh, <coughs> well we are talking about definitely a square matrix here and a talk of a determinant or a so, you are talking about an n cross n matrix a square matrix uh, which is singular determinant vanishing you are definitely talking about the rank of the matrix A in this particular case is less than n. That means, not a full rank matrix okay. uh, its rank is uh, at least one less at least one less than its corresponding order. And, uh, uh, and if you have an arbitrary matrix m cross n right here maybe we need to rub the board. The rank of A is uh, less than or equal to minimum of m comma n that depends upon the column space or the row space we are talking about and from that you find out the dimension of the column or row space of A it will tell you the corresponding rank. So, these are corresponding alternative definitions of rank and uh, 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 there are other terms associated with rank. Uh, it is uh, we often call a singular matrix as a rank deficient matrix, and corresponding to the rank, we have uh, a sort of a rank space and a corresponding a null space, which is used in various uh, manipulations of pattern recognition uh, systems and applications. Okay. Uh, there are a few properties I would like to specify with respect to the rank, and to do that, I will rub this example here. As for example, if you take the product of two matrices A and B and the corresponding rank of a matrix is uh, less than or equal to minimum of uh, rank of A and rank of B, it is less than or equal to the corresponding ranks. Okay. Then there are other types of uh, properties with respect to the ranks, a rank of A is also the rank of its transpose of that corresponding matrix 
or if the matrix is complex we talk of the complex conjugate in general uh, or also a, it is or equal to so these are nice properties which one can exploit with respect to uh, rank of a corresponding matrix okay and these are important uh, uh, a transpose a and a transpose are very uh, <coughs> common expressions you will get in certain applications of uh, computer science and theory is related to that so, uh, after we have got the concept of a rank, we move to the uh, important concept uh, of uh, analysis of matrices, which is singular valid decomposition. Or in short, we will mention it as SVD, people usually we will call it SVD which means singular value decomposition and it is very closely associated with the concept of rank which we have discussed just now. SVD is only one of the type of uh, decomposition possible for a matrix A. We will just name a few other decompositions which exist in literature and definitely some of them are used in the field of pattern recognition. Uh, uh, SVD being the most uh, commonly used uh, popular one, but given a matrix A. Uh, there are various other types of decompositions which are possible, which are non SVD type, and just name a few of them. Okay. The famous one, uh, or the first one which you will find uh, commonly in the book, is uh, splitting a matrix A into uh, two components, lower triangular and upper triangular matrix, a very common process which is used for many uh, processes, including equation solving. You can also split this into uh, another form which is LDU. This equal to does not mean that this L and U is the same as this, what I mean is that you can either split an A into L into U or L, D and U where D is actually a strictly a diagonal matrix, D is strictly a diagonal matrix, L is an upper triangular matrix, so a lower triangular matrix and U is an upper triangular matrix. I repeat L is a lower triangular matrix, U is an upper triangular matrix. Um, in the special case of LDU, unlike LU, uh, you should have uh, once in the diagonal of L and U, okay, okay, which is uh, not uh, guaranteed in the case of L U. Okay, uh, you can check this uh, few things. This other uh, uh, thing which is possible uh, is uh, actually very closely associated decomposition, which is uh, C C transpose, which is basically the same matrix where C is basically a uh, yes, C is a lower triangular matrix. Okay, so C has the form as uh, same as L. And uh, since it is a transpose, it will actually give you a corresponding upper triangular matrix as well. The other type of decomposition which is possible is uh, Q multiplied by R, where Q is a orthogonal matrix. Okay, mm, and do you know what is R? R is upper triangular matrix. Okay, so it is an orthogonal matrix multiplied by an upper triangular matrix. This process is actually called. Do you know the name? This is the Gram Smith process. Or Gram Smith process of orthogonalization. This also has a name C C transpose. Any idea? Is is also called is actually called the Cholesky decomposition or factorization. So we are talking different methods of matrix decomposition or matrix factorization. So these are different. Uh, things which are possible and of course, uh, you can also have similar to Q dot uh, R is equivalent to Q dot H, where Q is orthogonal and H is it is a positive definite matrix. Okay. So, where H is positive definite. And finally, for the SVD, we have the famous decomposition which gives you U this is singular value decomposition. In some sense it is similar to this, but we will tell you what are these U and V. Okay. Okay. 
So you so I will write it in this particular form where if you have an m cross n matrix A okay, I am following m cross n because we have followed that m cross n uniformly through the uh, but of course in some books you may get p cross q and things like that. So you have a m cross m u which is not an upper triangular matrix do not confuse this with u in fact I will probably rub this so that we do not have any confusions with the notations for SVD compared with this these are uh, uh, some of the popular commonly used decompositions which are possible none of them is of SVD type okay. uh, lower upper LGU, Cholesky, Gram Smith. Uh, and the q multiplied by it. So, I will rub this. U is an orthogonal matrix. I will complete the expression then write. Then you have a diagonal matrix S or sigma as it is called sometimes and this is m cross n and then finally, you have the V transpose which is n cross n. Out of these U and V uh, U and V are orthogonal matrices. Then various properties of matrices we must have mentioned uh, concept of orthogonality. So, have a look at that. Uh, in fact, some books will mention this that uh, the uh, basically these are orthogonal matrices which come uh, consist of uh, the corresponding eigen vectors and uh, sometimes you uh, uh, some notation says that you consist of left eigen vectors we consist of right eigen vectors and this is strictly diagonal okay what is the property of orthogonality first of all u u transpose or its inverse is this transpose of a matrix is inverse if it's orthogonal the same property is this And uh, what does U and V contain? Okay, the basically you are talking about U. They are orthogonal matrices, and so U consists of what we call as eigenvectors of A A transpose and v consists of eigenvectors of a transpose a or the columns of u are the columns of u are eigenvectors of a transpose columns of v are eigenvectors of a transpose a and the singular values so if you write this matrix is a diagonal form it will look something like this some m of a certain size so it is strictly diagonal and this consists of what are called singular values of A. This word singular value has a very uh, uh, close relationship with the Eigen values in fact they are the Eigen values of A transpose or A transpose A which are you will find here. So, you can find the corresponding Eigen values of that and the root over of that will give you the singular values. So, how do you compute let us take an example and do this example keeping the definitions in the middle I will start on the left hand side of the board and move to the right hand side to compute just to show an example how this is done. Of course, I must tell you that if you have a very large matrix computing the Eigen vectors Eigen values or doing an SVD decomposition there are good algorithms which will do this efficiently for you. There are various libraries in C functional programming languages like Mathematica and MATLAB will also have rich functional libraries which does an SVD of an arbitrary matrix. So, but for the sake of illustration which we can work out in a classroom we will take a small example of a 2 cross 3 matrix. Uh, Let us take some values again this is from the book.
okay. So, you have to compute these three factors and for both of these as well as the Eigen values here you need to compute A transpose or A transpose A, okay. Given A you know what it is transpose, I am directly asking you to obtain the product of A multiplied by A transpose. Work it out, you will find that now this is a 2 cross 3, so the A transpose will be 2 cross 2 matrix, please work it out, you should get a value. Uh, matrix which is, has these values as its elements, okay. So, that is A transpose, we will come back to A transpose A later on, okay. So, for this particular matrix, there will be two corresponding Eigen values, we uh, did this in the last class trying to find out the uh, Eigen values and Eigen vectors given a matrix, the 2 cross 2, the corresponding Eigen values are, you should be able to work it out yourself, based on the method which we have done, there are lambda 1 equals 10, lambda 2 equals 11 or 12, 12, okay. And the corresponding Eigen vectors, I want to write this in this form, what is V1, V2 corresponding Eigen vectors of this matrix corresponding to lambda 1 and lambda 2, okay. So, these are two columns, okay. What do you get? If you work it out, you should be able to get this the corresponding Eigen vectors corresponding to lambda 1 which is 10 will be 1, 1, this will be 1 minus 1 for lambda 2. So, what is means this is corresponding to lambda 1, this is corresponding to lambda 2. The, the, the only thing which I have not shown you here is that although I am writing this V1, V2, okay, let, let me uh, correct myself a bit, you will get these two as the corresponding Eigen values let me order it in the sense that the largest Eigen value uh, I putting as the first Eigen value okay, the largest value. So, let us put 12 here and let us put 10 here, okay. So, just a small correction here, uh, the, the Eigen values have not changed, but I have ordered it that the first Eigen value is the largest one out of the two, okay. So, if you have an n cross n matrix uh, of A transpose A, you will have n Eigen values, please order the Eigen values in descending order starting with the largest value and so for the corresponding largest Eigen value 12, this is uh, the Eigen vector V1 uh, for lambda 1 which is this and the corresponding, this order has to be preserved with respect to uh, the singular value decomposition. Now, to from this, this will actually yield U, okay, which is done by a Gram-Smith process or Gram-Smith process of orthogonalization and uh, I will leave this to you as a, a self-study please uh, you know, due to time constraints, uh, this is not a full fledged course on uh, linear algebra. So, uh, we are giving the bare minimum. So, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 and this will be again 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2. This uh, uh, from here to here by Gram's path. Of process of orthogonalization. Okay, so let's talk about V. So given this A on the left hand side, given this as your A, what will be your A transpose A? Will it be the same as A transpose? Well, not necessarily. That has a certain condition. It will not be anyway because it's a M cross N matrix. M is not equal to N. So this will be a three cross three matrix. And if you work out the elements, in order for the sake of time. Let me give you the values, it is 10, 0, 2, second row is 0, 10, 4 and okay, so it is a 3 cross 3 matrix, a transpose. So, you will have 3 again values, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 2, I will put them in descending order as we did, uh, uh, as I talked about earlier. So, 12. Uh, this will be 10 and lambda 3 will be 0. Basically saying that this is the rank deficient matrix, not full rank. <coughs> you will not have all the Eigen values which are non-zero here. Uh, now, not necessarily when you compute you will get it in this order. You might get the first Eigen value as this, but uh, we are ordering them as per descending order and then 
the corresponding eigenvectors for this. So, I am writing them as v1 sorry yeah v1 v2 v3 corresponding to v. I am not writing this as v because we have to do a Gram Smith process. So, the corresponding eigenvectors for 12, 10 and 0 you will get it as this check it out yourself. which by the help of this Gram Smith process will give us the V and I am actually giving you the V transpose. Remember Gram Smith of this will give you the V and then you do a transpose to get this. So, I am writing the V transpose directly and uh, can you give me the values? What is the first row? You will get 1 by then the second one root 5 we transpose I am writing directly. Mm. What is the second row? 2 by root 5, okay. 0, root 18, then minus 5 by you can use any algorithm to compute this okay now you can see that the a transpose a a transpose and a transpose a look at the eigen values you have i did say sometime back that you will get them same okay except that you now you have one uh, which is equal to 0 uh, that is the uh, least one which you have for n cross n. Okay? Uh, the first two are same. So, the corresponding now if I write the value of s. Okay, so, now the calculation of the sigma sometimes in some books you will write it as s. So, you will write this is the corresponding Eigen values singular values are the root over of the Eigen values of the A transpose. So, you will get them as root over 12 root over 10 that is all and this is a diagonal matrix I did say, but of course, uh, what you will get is uh, if, if m is not equal to n you will get a, a non square uh, mat diagonal matrix as well uh, which uh, having one column or one row as zeros. So, the final form of the SVD I am not writing it together will be u sigma and v transpose or u is s and v transpose that is called the Eigen vectors left Eigen vectors then you have this matrix. So, if it is original matrix is of 2 cross 3. So, you have 2 cross 2 then 2 cross 3 here which is the middle mat and the right hand side was here which is 3 cross 3. So, this is an example of a singular value decomposition which will be used extensively in many pattern recognition algorithms which you will see. Okay, so, we uh, this concludes the discussion on introduction on linear algebra and concepts which are necessary for pattern recognition applications. Uh, we move on to further concepts of uh, uh, mathematical concepts of pattern recognition. Also, I must uh, remind you that uh, you can find relevant material about linear algebra and its applications uh, in, in a set of books which are given in the next slide which is coming up for you.